ईश्वर शक्तिमान सर्वधार सर्वदाता तुम अनंत काल से अपने उपकारों की वर्षा की जाती हो प्राणी मात्र की संपूर्ण कामनाओं को तुम ही प्रतिखंड पूर्ण करते हो मेरे लिए जो कुछ शुभ है तथा हितकर है उसे तुम बिना मांगे ही समय ही हमारी झोली में डालते जाते हो तुम्हारे आंचल में अवचल शांति तथा आनंद का वास है तुम्हारी चरण शरण शीतल छाया में परम तृप्ति है शाश्वत सुख की उपलब्धि है तथा सभी अभिलाषित पदार्थों की प्राप्ति है हे जगत पिता परमेश्वर हे दाता हम में सात्विक वृत्तियां जागृत हो क्षम्या सरलता सतर्कता निभरता अहंकार शून्यता इत्यादि शुभ भावनाएं हमारी संपत्ति हो हमारा शरीर स्वस्थ तथा परिपुष्ट हो मन सूक्ष्म तथा उन्नत हो आत्मा पवित्र तथा सुंदर हो तुम्हारे संस्पर्श से मेरी सारी शक्तियां विकसित हो हृदय दया तथा सहानुभूति से भरा हो वाणी में मिठास हो दृष्टि में प्यार हो विद्या और ज्ञान से हम परिपूर्ण हो हमारा व्यक्तित्व महान तथा विशाल हो दीन अति दीन के मध्य में विचरने वाले तुम्हारे चरण बिंदु में मेरा जीवन अर्पित हो इसे अपनी सेवा में लेके कृतार्थ करो बेड़ा पार करो सबको सबका बेड़ा पार करो प्रभु सब पर दया करो प्रभु सब का व्यवहार अच्छा हो प्रेम में जीवन हो ऐसी हमें सबको शक्ति दो ओम शांति शांति थैंक यू सुनीता जी थैंक यू मम्मी थैंक यू आशी यू कैन टेक ओवर ना Can everybody hear? I don't. Where is Shakti? Can you hear her? Can you? Yes, yes. Okay. So. Asha ji, yeah, I don't see Asha ji now. Where is she? Now, can you hear me? Oh, now we can hear you. Yes. Yeah. So, Asha ji, would you like me to put you on the spotlight so that everybody can see you? Would you like that? Meet. Whatever you'd like to do, you're the master of ceremony, Sarita Ji. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's <fine>. your choice. <laughs> Whatever makes sense, that would be great. Good. I, I have done that also. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Ajit. Namaste. Good morning. Salam alaikum. It's such a beautiful morning today. Fall is already here. so a little crisp in the air and that's when your joints begin to speak to you right jaise thand padti hai you feel joints are a little stiffer and achier so today's topic is uh, on arthritis and uh, what i'd like to point out are two or three main things that arthritis is not a global term you know we think oh thoda sa jor dard ho raha hai it's arthritis not necessarily so there are different kinds of arthritis and it's important that we get that diagnosed correctly so the treatment can be done appropriately so without further ado sunitha ji could you please uh, launch the powerpoint thank you okay So as you know a lot of our terms in medicine come from the latin or greek roots so arthritis actually means arthros which means a joint a joint is where two bones come together and itis means inflammation so any time you hear bursitis uh, anything that ends with an itis it means there's inflammation in the joint now do remember that all inflammation is not bad for us inflammation actually is the body's way to repair the injury or the assault that's been there on a joint or on that particular body part so it's not but the problem is the body overreacts 
And so the joint gets swollen, red, it's painful, warm. And one of the biggest issues we have culturally is we tend at that time to put heat on it, which increases the inflammation and the swelling rather than ice it. So if the joint is swollen, that's a better time to do ice. So the first arthritis we're gonna talk about, which is common to about 50% of adults as we age, is osteoarthritis. Osteo meaning bone arthritis, you've already learned what it is. It's the most common type. And uh, all of you will relate to this picture in the, on the screen. I mean, all of us are getting a little knobby joint, you know, a, a bit, a, what is called a Hebbidens node. And it's due to overuse and body having to bear too much weight. So the shock absorbing material, the cartilage gets worn out. And so the bones are on bone. You'll often hear in your knee, the doctor will say your bone is on bone. So you need to get a new knee joint. But sometimes that's not the only reason to get a new knee joint. It's how it's affecting your function because oftentimes the body is very smart. It strives towards balancing or a homeostasis. So the bones get polished and as they get polished, they get smoother. And so movement still is possible, but the factors that decide whether you're a candidate for surgery or not is function, is how much the pain is bothering your daily life. So what are the most joints affected? Hands? Wrists, so heart, uh, wrist ko kya get I can't the, I can't remember the Hindi word for it. Ghutne, knees, and hips. Causes, if your mother had it, your likelihood of getting it is a little bit higher. Do weight-bearing joints, hai, they do respond to overweight. So much so that if you have even 10 pounds less weight on your knee, it relieves the pain by almost 30%. So do remember that. Every single pound of extra weight on the knees increases the wear and tear 30 times more. It's like carrying a bag of potatoes around. And of course, overuse. And I think Indian folks are most used to overuse. They, they tend to cook a lot. They want to sit cross-legged. All our uh, cultural and other activities tend to get us to overuse these joints. So what are the symptoms? Oftentimes, and this is important to remember, most of the symptoms for arthritis follow a certain pattern. So you'll find that when you get up in the morning, since you've not been moving, the joint gets stiff. Then of course, there's pain. And then of course, you get the deformity where the joint changes its very position to accommodate for the wear and tear of the cartilage. Next, please. So the first one I'm talking about is rheumatoid arthritis. And I, I know there's at least one lady here who has it because she had mentioned methotrexate to another physician. I'm sorry, I can't remember your name, but I see her in the picture here. Yes, I'm Ratna. That's right, Ratna ji. I remember you talking about that. Yes. So this is not osteo. This is different. This is an autoimmune disease like lupus or some of the other autoimmune diseases where the body considers your own joint lining as if it were a foreign body. So it mounts an attack on its own self, assuming that there's an injury, and so it sends all the white blood cells and begins to protect the joint, although there's truly no reason to do that. So it's a problem with the autoimmune system. So what does RA do? It leads to inflammation. It causes joints to become red and swollen. But most of all, we have to remember that rheumatoid can occur at any age. So I had a young little girl who was only 12 who had rheumatoid arthritis, and it often attacks many joints, not just one joint. And the sad part is that that is a side effect. You can get mitral valve prolapse as a result of rheumatoid arthritis. There are muscle and nervous system involvements as a result of that, because it's a systemic issue. It's something that's happening centrally 
to all your body. It's part of the autoimmune disease. So rheumatoid arthritis treatment plan is different, and we'll talk about that at the next one. Next slide, please. So what is gout? Gout is the same as gatia. A lot of you know it as gatia, where you know the big toe gets involved or one of the small joints gets involved. It's a very painful one. However, it's very treatable. So what happens with gout is crystals of uric acid form in the connective tissue, which makes the joint hot and red. So the biggest involvement are usually the big toe, the ankle, and the elbow. So gatia jo hai, wo zyada tar bade toe mein, aapke anguthe mein hota hai, aapke pair mein ya kohani mein hota hai. Aur ye zyada tar reaction hai to consumption of shellfish. Agar aap shrimp, prawns zyada kha rahe hai, there's a chemical in it that creates the formation of these little crystals inside your joint dried beans, anchovies, gravy. So there are certain, met this is a metabolic type of arthritis. So the reason for this arthritis is something you're reacting to because of that metabolite, because of that chemical in the joint. However, since it is a metabolic thing, treatment is much better available. And uh, some of you may have taken something called allopurinol and it usually goes away. And, but it does recur and it can be very painful. But now you see why it's important to know what is causing the arthritis. Next, please. So what are the other kinds of arthritis? Oftentimes you've seen people, uh, I don't know if we can highlight the picture that's in the corner there, where the person is completely stooped over head is slightly forward and they feel very, very stiff. What happens with ankylosing spondylitis is it's cause uh, the fact that spondylitis is happening in the spine. So itis means inflammation. So there's inflammation of these two sacroiliac joints. They get fused to the pelvis. So of course you can see if one area of the spine does not move at all, what is the domino effect? Every other joint begins to get tighter and harder to move. And so the person basically becomes like uh, Mantara or the Notre and uh, the Hunchback of Notre Dame, where the head is completely forward and the spine is totally curved and the pelvis doesn't move at all. So that's the, it's a progressive kind of spondylitis. So it doesn't stop with one episode. It's a progressive thing during your lifetime. We do have good medications for it. However, every medication comes with some side effects. So the second is psoriatic arthritis. Now, you wouldn't imagine that a skin disease could give you arthritis. However, this is an effect of people, jinko ye skin condition hai called psoriasis that creates psoriatic arthritis. And third, this is an extremely important one, it's called reactive arthritis, which is a reaction to another illness in the body. So I have to share with you, I had a patient just 40 years old and he'd come to the clinic and he was getting ready to get his hip replaced. And we were all surprised why is a 40 year old young adult man getting his hip replaced? And he told us that when he was younger, he had asthma. And for the asthma, he was asked to use a steroid and it was a high dose of steroid. And as a result, the little head of the femur, the bone that goes in the hip, had suffered what we call avascular necrosis. That means there was no blood supply to this part of the bone, which had caused it to die basically. And so the hip had to be replaced. So this can happen with certain kinds of medications that you might take early on in life. The TMJ is this joint. Can you please move your jaw for me and put your fingers here? Can you try that? Mummy, apna hat rakhe maa pe or try kare. That's the TMJ joint, the temporomandibular jaw. This jaw bone gets affected. That's the only movable part in the skull. And the most common reason nowadays 
is with Fosomax. If people who are taking a lot of the osteoporosis medications have a TMJ joint problem, but of course it can also be with people who had a locked jaw or they've had a misalignment and that creates uh, a little bit of arthritis, a wear and tear. We have a little disc here and that wears down. And you can imagine everything you do, like eating, talking, uh, taking a deep breath, pranayam, all of these things require a comfortable TMJ joint and also how your teeth are aligned. Next, please. So what's the treatment? As I said, each type of arthritis is handled differently. However, there are some common denominators. So we've seen how some arthritis due to wear and tear, the osteoarthritis, rheumatoid is due to autoimmune disease, gout is due to a metabolic reason, psoriasis can cause psoriatic arthritis. However, treatment is slightly different. So for example, if you have rheumatoid arthritis, you want to protect the joint when it's inflamed. You don't want to move it. You want to protect it because otherwise you will destroy the lining of the joint. So it's important that each diagnosis is done correctly. However, there are four very common ways. Char shiz hai jo common hai sari conditions ke liye. So if the joint is inflamed, it's red, it's hot, rest that part. Doesn't mean aap puri body ko rest kare, us joint ko rest kare. Or rest kaise kare? You can put a splint on, you know, a brace laga sakte hai. Gentle exercise. Now, why exercise? It's the type of exercise which we call range of motion. And what that does is it lubricates the joint. Aapke joints mein ek oil hai, ek synovial fluid hai. Or wo keval tab aata hai jab aap thoda sa movement karte hai. But bina weight keje. So these are exercises you do to gently move the joints. And we'll go through them at the end of the session but without putting any weight on it. And why eating a healthy balanced diet? We hear that a lot. In fact, there are now studies which says that you can have what we call an anti-inflammatory diet, which means eating more alkaline foods than more acidic foods. So essentially to keep it simple, lots of green fruits, vegetables, salads, cert certain amount of protein, but protein is acidic. So you balance it out with other forms of food that give you a more alkaline pH rather than an acidic pH. What else can you do? Because the main thing is life has to go on, but it has to do it in a way that doesn't hurt the joint. So you use adaptive tools. So for example, if your hand, and usually it's this thumb that gets affected and you cannot grasp a spoon, there are little handles available it's an adaptive tool with a spoon at the end of it. I don't know if anybody's used that, but that's a way that you can still manage to work with your hand and not have to put pressure on the joint. Because once the joint is weaker, it's uh, inflamed, you don't want to load the joint. That's very important to remember. So writing becomes a problem, feeding becomes a problem, putting your bra on, doing your hair, delicate movements. Humans are the only people who have this type of opposable thumb that allows us to write, to create paintings, to do fine motor activities. And that's the first one to go because that was the last thing to come in evolution. <laughs> Next, you can use splints, you know, a little brace, assistive device such as a cane. I know a lot of you have this mental barrier. Abhi to main Why should I use a cane? Why should I use a walker? please, it'll make you function independently because what happens is if you're not safe, you're going to stop moving. That's a bigger risk to take than getting over the aesthetic, emotional reaction to a cane or a walker or an assistive device. So better to use the cane. And we see that in Europe, everybody walks, they use a cane, it makes you look elegant, it makes you look safe. And most of all, it alerts other people to be a little careful around you so then you're not falling. If you're 
if a if a guy comes to mug you, you have a tool in your hand. In fact, we have a class in Danville is called a cane do, where they teach you how to ward off a burglar if he's coming towards you. So canes have a lot of use. Please don't be afraid to use them. The other things are little gadgets because sometimes it's so difficult to open a jar or door handles. So these are, an, it's a little kind of a, a sticky uh, fabric type of thing where you put it on top of the jar and then it quickly opens the jar for you. So there are a lot of these gadgets around. The key is stay functional, stay independent. That's the key to having a productive life. Don't let arthritis rule you, don't let it control you, but you take control of your problem. Next, please. So I put this in so that you'll remember the acronym rest as we said off the joint not all of you now how do you do ice ice is very easy to do you can either have a gel pack these are available on amazon all over the place you can order them or you can simply take a ziploc bag put some ice in it but i do want to warn you please put a layer of a scott towel or a light cloth between you and the skin because if you leave it on for too long you can get a skin burn in fact, I hate to say it, but Mummy G got a burn with it once when she fell asleep on it. So that was too long. 10 to 15 minutes is all you need. Our skin gets delicate as we get older. So you don't want to give yourself a frostbite. And the same thing with the heating pad. Please don't leave heating pads on at night. Don't sleep on them. They can give you a second degree burn. It's very dangerous. So basic rule of thumb, if the joint is hot, swollen, warm, use ice. If you are just stiff and achy, use heat. So for example, in the morning, you're a little stiff, achy, have a nice warm shower. Nothing wrong with it, do a heating pad. By the end of the day, with your cup of tea at 334, you've used your joints a lot. That's when they're sore, that's when they are tender. Good time to use the ice. Ice is not only for acute injury. Oftentimes we think, oh, ice is only for 48 hours after injury. No, 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 no. Anytime you're sore, you're tender, please use ice. If you're stiff, achy, use heat. Then you can use heat again at night before you go to sleep. But please don't overdo anything. What is compression? Compression means supporting it. So for example, if my ankle is hurting, I put an ACE wrap around it, right? So that gives it compression. Compression allows the fluid to move to the lymph node and relieve your swelling. So that's a very good tool. If your knee is bothering you, please feel free to wear your knee sleeve. Don't let it sit on the counter. And when you wear it, make sure you pull it up. So the major compression area is in the middle right above your kneecap. Oftentimes I see the sleeve hanging on the ankles. It's, 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 an, it's not doing anything for you. The idea is it should be able to support the joint and still let you move. Now, elevation, I do want to make a point. So if you're trying to relieve the swelling in your ankle, your elevation has to be above your heart. So how do you get that? So aap couch pe lete hai, aapki couch ki arm pe, agar aapka pair hai, to aapka pair aapke heart se uncha hai, right? So if you're lying on the couch and your feet are up, on the arm of the couch, or you put some pillows there, you have now created a drainage towards the heart. So very important that elevation is above your heart for the extremities that are far away. Now for the arm, etc., you can easily prop it up on pillows. It doesn't have to be very high because you see the drainage you want to go to your lymph node or your heart. Next, please. Oh, the P, I shouldn't forget the P. So I added the P because in physical therapy, we like to say it's passive range of motion. So for example, if my wrist is bothering me and it's warm or whatever, I'm keeping my splint on. But if I keep the splint on all the time, I'm going to get stiff and achy. In fact, the shoulder is a very classic example that if you keep it in one position in a sling, you will end up with a frozen shoulder because all the tissues tighten in that position and then you're not able to stretch it. So we say passive range of motion. What does that mean? It means 
having assistance to do it, but taking it through the whole range of motion. So for example, if it's my shoulder, I would use my other arm to hold my hand, and then I would lift the shoulder up. So now I am doing passive range for one arm, and this is the assisting arm. Same thing, if it's easier, you can cradle your elbows, just cradle your elbows, and then try to lift the arm up, right? Or you can use a cane or your dupatta, something as a tool to give you a passive range, an assisted range of motion. Passive really means that somebody else is doing it. So for example, if I was moving it yourself, you would hold your hand and then gently move it, right? Next, please. So what are the common medications? Most likely you all have used ibuprofen, naproxen, all of these. Now these are called NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication. The only issue is that some of you have problems with your tummy with it. However, acetaminophen, which is Tylenol, is not a substitute for an anti-inflammatory. So oftentimes people will say, well, many char Tylenol lily. No, no, no. When your joint is warm and swollen, you do need an anti-inflammation product. So if your stomach can tolerate it, we say use the anti-inflammatory for five to seven days because to work as an anti-inflammatory, it has to stay in your system. Otherwise, it doesn't do anything. By the time your brain registers the pain, the inflammatory pattern is already set up. So the body has to fight the cycle again. Tylenol is great for pain management, perfectly tolerated, no harm using it. However, prolonged use does cause problems with kidney. And so having a lab test periodically is a good idea, but they are not a substitute. Now they do have a special anti-inflammatory, which is called a COX-2 inhibitor, like Celebrex is one of them. Voltaren used to be one, but it was pulled off the market. So please check with your physician to what you can tolerate. With rheumatoid arthritis, the medications are totally different. They are biological medications. So they are disease modifying anti-rheumatic drug, which is the DMANDs. Corticosteroids, methotrexate, these are all anti-rheumatoid, which means they work on your immune system, not just the pain of the joint itself, but the reason for the pain in your joint. So it's important to address the right condition with the right medication. Gout, as many of you have tried before, you know, oftentimes they'll give you, depending on the attack, a corticosteroids. Now steroids are like, if nothing works, they just throw a steroid at you. But oftentimes they are called a tapering steroid. So it's usually a 10 or a seven day protocol you start with the highest dose and then you taper it. So steroids should be used carefully, but they do have a place in getting the inflammation down because the inflammation can cause joint destruction. So it's always a risk benefit ratio. So please don't make up your mind, oh, oh, nay, manato steroid, nay, nay, nay. If it's local, if you're getting a local injection, it doesn't have any systemic effect. So please don't be afraid to use medications in the right way, in the right manner, at the right time. And then of course, the specific to gout is this medication that dissolves the uric acid crystal, which is called allopurinol. Once again, if you don't know ki gathiya hai, to aap dawai kaise leng, right? So it's really important ki aap diagnosis karvai, ki kis tarah ka arthritis hai meri. Next, please. Therapeutic exercise. Now the word is therapeutic. So oftentimes I have noticed many of you say, I do yoga and then I'm so sore. Yoga is not one size fits all. What you have to do is find the right exercise for the right condition. So for example, if you have a disc problem at this age, usually it's due to some kind of stenosis. So the exercise in yoga we would rec recommend would be a knee to chest. However, we would ask you, please 
do not do the Bhujangasan because that closes the space for your nerve, increases your spinal cord pain. Why would you do that? So making sure that the exercise is therapeutic, that it helps your condition and matches it is very important. So for arthritis, gentle range of motion exercise helps lubricate the joint. Aerobic exercise, such as walking, bicycle, tread, very important, increases the oxygen uptake of your body. And then I wanted to mention a special exercise, which is called an isometric. So even if you are lying in bed and the muscles are going to go to waste, we can show you exercises where you do not move the joint, but you work the muscle. And we will go through a sample at the end of the lesson. Light weights for strengthening muscles are very good, like a two point two pound weight or even one pound, or even taking a small bag or your little purse with little material, it's always heavy enough to give you a little weight because muscles work on the principle of overload. Our normal activity doesn't consider exercise for your muscle. So thora sa overload chahiye uske liye. Next please. Water. So this is an important distinction I wanted to make. Agar aapko osteoporosis hai, if you have osteoporosis, water exercise is not the right exercise for you because it doesn't put any weight on your bones. But for arthritis, it's a perfect exercise because we want to relieve the weight on your joints. So arthritis ke liye water exercise is ideal because it protects your joint, it allows you to move a little more. However, it doesn't compress the joint, which is one of the reasons why the cartilage gets eroded. Heat compresses, moist heat is actually better than dry heat. So you can literally take a small hand towel, wet it, put it in the microwave for a minute or so. You have an instant moist heat towel. Please cover it before you place it on your body. It gives you wonderful relief and it relieves your pain and stiffness. And as I mentioned, ice packs, whenever the joint is warm, swollen, it brings the inflammation, brings the pain down. So you don't need as much medication. So people always ask, what about glucosamine, chondritin, SAMI? They're all, please remember these are supplements. So these are supplements that give nutrition to the cartilage. So they are not a treatment. They are simply a supplement in addition to whatever else is needed to work with you. And please avoid unproven remedies such as uh, snake venom, it says, or, you know, jari booty hoti, nothing wrong with it. But uh, if they are not proven, they don't really help you. Our biggest issue is that if they harm you, it's not worth uh, going for these unproven remedies. Next, please. So what are the surgical remedies? A lot of you have had your knees replaced and uh, hopefully have benefited with that. Joint replacements, especially at the, uh, the knees can relieve long-standing pain. They can make you more functional, but again, it is a painful procedure. You know, nothing works as good as your original material that was given by God to you. So some of the issues that occur with knee replacement is you lose your kinesthetic sense, your balance is off. So you have to retrain that. So rehab becomes extremely important. And that's where physical therapy plays a very big part in how well you get back to normal life. Tendon transplants for the rheumatoid hand. As you saw in that picture, you will see deformities with the rheumatoid hand. So oftentimes they will take a muscle and a tendon from another part of the body and replace the one that's missing. So in the thumb, there are two major movements. One is this one, abduction, and the other is from the little finger and out, opposition. So that, that's what gets lost, and then you end up with a hand like that, and so you can't grasp or do activities that are fine. So oftentimes, they will take a tendon from another part of the body. You know, there are large muscles in the hand itself that they can move it and transplant them to that tendon. There's a lot of uh, movement towards 
you may have heard of something called the Synvisc injection for knee joint pain. So what it does is it puts the special cell of, or a special liquid, the Synvisc is a lubricating liquid into the joint. And it's a series for like two or three sessions that you have to do. However, some people do react to it. In fact, reaction can be so bad that the person cannot even move. So you have to be careful in watching what you do, but it's definitely one possibility before you look at a knee replacement. And then of course, there's joint reconstruction and arthroscopy. Now arthroscopy is basically a little tube with the camera. So if you have a cartilage remnant or a little piece of the cartilage floating around in your knee joint due to an injury or some kind of activity you've done, what it does, it is aspirates it, it takes that out because it's like having a hair in your eye. Every time you move the joint, the little particle bothers it, it creates pain, then it creates stiffness and then becomes a deformity. So arthroscopy has its role in some of the joints to clean up the joint and they can also do a little reconstruction with the arthroscope. Next, please. So let's get physical. Walk 30 minutes a day. If you cannot walk for 30 minutes at one stretch, perfectly all right. Pandra minute, 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes in the afternoon. No problem. Just build it into your day. More and more research is saying it's the total activity that counts. It doesn't have to be a gym protocol. It doesn't have to be that you have to walk a hill. Just getting up, being active, putting weight on your hands and feet is all you need. Do your range of motion exercise. You know, make sure you take each joint through its entire range of motion. Manage your weight. Very important reason, as I mentioned, especially for your joints, your ankles, your hips. Every 10 pounds of extra weight increases the problem by 30 fold on that joint. And Use what you have, rest, meds, heat, ice, meds. Enjoy life. Don't let your joints control you. That's very important. Next, please. So chronic pain, I wanted to mention that very often chronic pain is not the same pain as acute pain. So acute pain is usually when there is an actual injury and there's an insult to the joint. Chronic pain is really which uh, where the trigger is gone, you know, aapki injury very purani hui, but the pain persists. So that's really an issue with your pain pathways, the way our spinal cord, the tracks, how they manage the pain, that gets stuck. It's like a gramophone record, jaki needle stuck hai. It makes you hyper aesthetic. It, every little thing hurts. Sometimes I had patients say, that my sweater bothers me, that triggers the pain. Just a little touch bothers me. I just touch my elbow somewhere and, I, and the flare up occurs. So chronic pain may be due to a disease but not necessarily correlated with the disease itself. And we've had a session on chronic pain before. There are many ways to manage it. And what we're doing when we do massage, when we do rest ice, we are blocking the gateway, the pathway of the message to that pain. So for example, as you are sitting here talking to us, you're involved with another activity. I can assure you, you're not aware of that pain that you had when you first got up in the morning, because you see your mind can only engage with so much stimulation at a time. It requires 40% more stimulation to find the difference. So for example, if there's a fire, you will forget your knee joint and run for the door without thinking about it. Maybe you've never run in your life before because you see the pain factors that are the, the quick ones are for survival. So chronic pain is a whole issue by itself and uh, we will go into it at another time. So any pain that's more than six months is called chronic pain. Next, please. So as we said, the management, a lot of it is mental, cognitive. We used to have a unit that we used to have people wear. It's called a biofeedback unit. So if the signal is red, we ask you 
to gently relax, meditate, whatever you do, and make it green. So now you have a feedback mechanism of knowing whether I'm relaxed or not. I had shown you a TENS unit before. It's a small battery operated unit. It's a great one for pain management. Again, it works on what we call the gate control theory of pain. So if you have this nice electrical vibration going up your spinal cord pathways, guess what? The pyramidal pathways that carry pain are quieter because you have something else overriding it. Meditation, mindfulness, and this is not the same as chanting and bhajan. So please remember, this is really what Mr. Arjun Bhagat does with you guys, you know, the quiet meditation. And Buddhism has done a great job in meditation techniques. And if you can look up, you can have a guided meditation either with Vipassana or someone who shows you how to use your breath because the breath is always with you. It's your biofeedback. You can use your breath to be watchful of it coming in, coming out without doing anything. No forceful breathing, no Ramdev style breathing, just being a witness. So you take your mind away from entering your body to become an observer. Yes, that's my body, but I am away. I'm watching. As soon as you make that shift in perspective, the pain always goes away. Pain has three characteristics, whatever it is. Sensation has three characteristics. It arises, it goes away, and then it changes. So you can try this experiment. Wherever you have pain, just keep your mind on it for five seconds. Don't do anything. Don't move, don't touch it, don't press it. Just watch the pain and keep your focus on it for five seconds. And you will see, A, the pain will either move to a different site, it will either reduce in intensity or it will simply go away. So please practice mindfulness meditation. Hobbies and games. When you're playing Rami, you're playing, uh, I think you guys have been doing, uh, what is that, uh, Lotto or uh, Tambola or whatever, or brain games. That's a time where you completely forget about your joint pain. And volunteering, social involvement, doing something for someone else. Make a habit that today I am going to do something very simple for someone else, whether it's someone close to you, someone who comes to help you, even if it means just thinking of Meda, of sending them a very compassionate pot that removes your focus from yourself. Getting involved socially is the best antidote, and all of you are doing it with ICC. And spiritual, finding transcendence, mind over matter. So I have to tell you, in the 60s, when the Beatles go to Mahesh Yogi, you know, they're all experimenting with mind-altering drugs. They're taking marijuana, they're doing LSD. These are experiments going on at uh, Harvard University. And we, even Shiva, had a mind-altering drug. After all, what was Somrasa? Your coffee is a mind-altering drug. So humans have been experimenting with mind-altering substances for a long time. The main thing is finding a way to use them that they don't harm you, but they also allow you to go beyond your matter or your body. So finding a practice every day. So 15 minutes of reading something good, 15 minutes of spirituality, either you just commit to sit, nothing special required, and 15 minutes of exercise. If you can just do that every single day, you'll find you'll be able to balance and manage your pain. Next, please. I think that's the end of the, the PowerPoint. Great. So let's do a quick session of range of motion exercise. And Sunitaji, if you can look in the chat, I did see some questions. So yes, I, I can have those questions. Them while I work with this. Okay. So yeah. when you get up in the morning, before you get out of bed, this is what I'd like you to start with. I hope you can see me. So the first thing you start is with your feet. So with your feet, I'm showing you my hands, but it's actually your feet. So can you see my foot? I'm not sure. All right. So you start with your ankles, move your feet around. 
and compress your feet. This is your feet. Move your ankles around. That's the range of motion for your feet. Good. Very gently, if you cannot lift your leg, slide your heel towards your chest. Bring your knee to your chest. Bring your knee to your chest. You are still lying down in bed. Hold under the joint here and do a circle. You have just worked your hip when you do that. Bring your leg out and gently slide your heel out and back. Heel out and back. So right now you've done all the range of motion you need to do for your hip, your knee and your ankle. And do it as often as you like, three times, five times, more than enough. So do the same with the other leg. Now bring both knees up towards your chest. Roll to the right, roll to the left. Not hard to do, but if it is hard, use your hand to work on pulling the joint over. Now, very gently take your arms straight up. Bring them behind you if you can. If the shoulders hurt, you cannot go above that. Stay where you are. Most of us, who, most of you, who like to do rotis and work with atta and things on kitchen counter, most of our counters are much too high for us. Many of us are five foot or less. So you can put it in your sink and then you can be below 90 degrees. Agar aapke shoulders, 90 degrees is positions in each air, they do not hurt as much because pinch naked the hairs go. So apna kaam jo hai, aap elbows ko nazdeek rakke, Shoulders ko niche rakke kare. So ata goon rain, do that. Hota ye ki aap yun hote hain jab aap rotiyan banate hain. And that bothers the shoulder. So just bring your elbows close. Come up on a little footstool if you need to. So that you're a little higher and your arms are lower than your shoulder. So then this is the movement you're doing rather than up here. Same with computer jab aap bethe hain. Please don't put your arms out on the chair. Be in the piano position. So up is position me hai, that ki everything is comfortable, all the nerves have enough room to conduct and your joints are comfortable. Then of course we do the elbows and then out the wings, the chicken wings, shoulder shrugs, squeeze cutting blades go. Very good. Drop your neck and like a pendulum, just let it move. Great. Look to your right, look to your left. It's very important to avoid looking back because a lot of us have cervical arthritis, spondylosis. Usse aapki balance ki issue hoti ya chakkar aata hai. So keep your head and neck aligned. Don't go too far back. Agar wo karna hai, then go with your whole spine. So the whole back is working rather than just your head compressing the nerve in the back, right? And then your each joint of your finger. I did want to show you, this is very important. You want to do a little traction. So pull kare a thoda sa, or pir rotate kare. Pull each joint and circle. Ab next wala joint, pull kare zara, circle kare. Same, these are the ones that are the hardest because they've got the nodes. And usko zara sa, massage karke and move them. But traction, moving the joint apart is important because that relieves the pressure. So you can do that with each of your fingers. Thumbs ki saath, if you want a little more exercise, you can put a rubber band and then use it to go this way and that way, or go this way and that way, right? So rubber band yaha pe hai and ye thoda sa resistance ho jata ji. There are also little balls available, a little exercises with little springs in it. So hands become very important. And please remember, keep working your, your wrists Swing them out, bring them out. And the best exercise when your shoulder hurts is the pendulum, where you lean over and you let your arm just hang like a pendulum. You're not doing anything, gravity is helping you out. Same with your knees. If you sit on a higher footstool or a bar stool, let your legs dangle, let the joint have a little space. So remember, a little room in the joint relieves the pain to a large extent. Next, we'll do isometric. So this is stuff you do when you first get up in the morning. 
Isometric is just tightening the muscle without moving the joint. So, apne wrist ko, fist ko banayi is tarah se. Good, good. And then as if you are punching someone and push against the other hand. Just push against the other hand, push. So, aapki sari muscles kaam kar rahe. You can push against the wall, against a pillow. Just a simple pillow. Push against it. This is all isometric. Now, simply tighten your buttock. Squeeze the buttock. You haven't moved anywhere, right? But you have tightened the buttock. Same thing with the knee. When it's out there, you can put it up on the table. Tighten that big muscle, the quadriceps. Tighten the kneecap. Push down your heel into the bed. That gets your hamstring. So if you wish to, uh, I can either send a link to isometrics, but you can also look it up. There are a lot of things available on the net. So anytime you are not able to move the joint, you can still do isometrics and that keeps the muscle in a good position. That's all I have to say. And now I'm ready for questions. Yeah, actually, I'll, I'll yeah. ask, there were three or four questions in the chat. Okay. Uh, and we can give quick answers. There are only seven, eight minutes left. No problem. Uh, first question, glucosamine and impact of a diabetic hai. Glucosamine ka koi fayda hai and dusra, does it have any uh, problems with the, for diabetic people? Okay. It's not that it has problems for diabetic people, it's the medication you're on. So I have no idea how to manage your diabetes, but uh, the best thing is please run it by your doctor. But glucosamine and chondritin is a supplement. It's like taking a vitamin. Now, if you have a shellfish allergy, Glucosamine chondritin sometimes is not tolerated because it's extracted out of shellfish. So this is what you need to figure out. And oftentimes your pharmacist is a better person to ask about that. And it's actually a very good idea to check with them to see because they know all your medications if there's any sort of interaction with anything. So don't assume that it's a supplement so I can take it on my own. Anything you're taking, Please verify with your physician or the pharmacist. Ki ye dawai le Can I take this with it? I'll give you a very interesting example. I had started to give my own mother Tylenol PM, and I couldn't understand the side effects she was having, and I knew it was something to do with the medication. So the doctor couldn't come up with it. You know, she was getting dry mouth, a cough all the time. So I called the pharmacist. And he says the culprit is the PM part of Tylenol has Benadryl in it, which is a sleep aid, but it's also an antihistamine. And what it does is dries up the mucus. So of course it was keeping her up all night rather than letting her sleep. So even someone who is well, you know, educated in the area can sometimes ignore the fact that certain things in a particular product can create a reaction. So to your answer, please check with your doctor before you take anything. Okay. Uh, there is question related to uh, dal. Can that yeah. cause, for vegetarians who eat a lot of dal, can that uh, cause gout or anything? Is that yes, that's a very good question. In fact, uh, we have a niece who is very big on meat and dal, and you are correct. Dried beans do have uh, too much nitrogen, which creates the uric acid, and too much of it can be a contributing factor, not by itself alone. But yes, vegetarians can also have a predisposition to that. Yogendra Ji ka question hai, can uh, you take too many steroid injections? How much limit? Elaborate on that one. Okay. So you get it, it depends on which part of the body you're taking it. So for example, say it's your knee. Normally we recommend because it softens the soft tissue. It breaks down the ligament in that area. So the protocol today is not more than three times. However, if you're taking a steroid in your spine for an epidural, that's a different matter. So it depends on a concert steroid layer or kiss joint ki le le le. But general rule of thumb is not more than three per year. 
Okay. Uh, some uh, someone uh, has requested a link to isometric exercises that you, yeah. so um, you can send that through. I will send it to you, and then you can send it. Yeah, to yeah, we'll. No and uh, uh, Manjuji wants uh, demonstration of neck traction technique. Is that okay. something you can show quickly? Or is that Manjuji, I'll do that with you separately, not with the whole group. And and then Rohitji mentioned my finger started paining suddenly. <laughs> what should I do? I think you're putting your hands on the computer too much. <laughs> no, no, this is this is actually me, and I can't uh, open my video. I don't know what is happening. They say the uh, person has. I mean, you have muted me. Oh yeah, Dinesh, bhaiya, can you unmute my video? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I think you are unmuted. You are coming through. But your voice is coming through. Just. No, I am Subhashini. I am talking. Yes. And Rohit, no, Rohit, my son. His name was Yasmin. But I can't. 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 I uh, it uh, said Subhashini. you have muted. Let me see it if I can muted. ask to start video. Go ahead. Try it now. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, there you oh, are. He, you, you, now. He, he, you, you cannot start your video because you, the host you, has you, you disabled it. Yeah, yeah. What are alkaline foods? Yeah. You mentioned alkaline foods. Elaborate on that one. All right. Yeah. Can I Thank finish you. Uh, addressing the finger question? Yeah. So, <laughs> Yeah. It was this finger of the uh, left hand. Please, 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 it has reduced, but still I can't move it below this. Right. So Subhashini ji, that sounds like a trigger finger where the tendon gets tight. Oh. So the tendon travels through all these three joints. Yeah, yeah. Agar wo sheet tight hai, and that happens to lots of people. Okay. Or uh, is tarah ki deformity bhi ho jati hai. So that's called a trigger finger. And then your best exercise is what we call the slinky exercise. Just me up each joint go move cut there. Yeah. yeah, it feels less pain if I hold it and then move. Yes, it yes, yes. So but suddenly I mean it up. never happened. Suddenly. Just a minute, ji. Each uh, joint go up block karke move karenji. Each joint go okay. block karke okay. move karen. Okay. And then doing a little bit of this and yeah. slinky. And then uh, squeezing a ball is a good idea. Mm. And then please get a check. There's a simple injection they can do if they have to, if it continues to bother you. Okay, okay. That sounds yeah. like a tendon issue. Yeah, yeah, now, yeah. Now the next okay. question, please. La last one, a question, alkaline foods. Do give, elaborate. That's what a very alkaline. good question. So for example, aap santra khate hai, usme citrus hai. That's an acidic food, right? Aap meats khate hai, th those create acidic effects. Alkaline effects are created by foods such as leafy vegetables, things that don't create too much acid production in your stomach. So okay. I can also send you a link of an alkaline diet. So I'll do isometrics, range of motion exercise, and alkaline diet. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Adi. Thank you. Uh, last question. Does the cartilage regenerate by itself? I wish it would. We are not earthworms. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. Not yet. They are doing stem cell treatments. They are working on, you know, uh, the whole idea of pluripotent cells, placenta cells, they're looking at that. But as you know, there's a lot of political debate about it. There are ethical issues. So for now, unfortunately, you got to work with what you have. So maintain, prevent, wear and tear, keep up the nutrition and energy requirements it needs. And that should last you a lifetime. After all, how Shastra me likha hai ki saw saal tak to chalna hi chahiye. Very good session. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah
and uh, we have recorded this session. We'll send you the recording. And uh, Sunita ji, you can take over for the next program.